Welcome to Books Recapped. Howard Phillips Lovecraft. The Shadow Over in Smooth. In the winter of 1927, 28, officials of the federal government conducted a secret investigation in the Massachusetts seaport of Innsmouth. The investigation resulted in raids, arrests, and the destruction of many houses along the waterfront. The public was told that it was a crackdown on liquor, but many news followers wondered about the large number of arrests made and the secrecy surrounding the disposal of the prisoners. It was later revealed that the prisoners were sent to disease and concentration camps, and newspaper men were largely cooperative with the government. However, one paper reported on a submarine that discharged torpedoes in the marine abyss beyond Devil Reef. The people of Innsmouth and nearby towns were secretive about the investigation, and the town was left almost depopulated. As a young antiquarian and architecture enthusiast, the narrator and protagonist of our story embarked on a tour across New England. His journey led him, by mere accident, to the mysterious and ruined town of Innsmouth. He proceeded to describe in detail the events surrounding his initial interest in the town, which lay along the route of his tour across New England. While he waited for the bus that would take him to Innsmouth, he busied himself in the neighboring town of Newburyport by gathering information from local townsfolk, all of it with superstitious overtones. A man explained to the protagonist that the town used to have mills but now only had one gold refinery that was running on a part-time basis. The owner of the refinery, Old Man Marsh, was said to be very wealthy but also a queer old duck who stuck to himself due to some kind of skin disease or deformity. Marsh was the grandson of Captain Obeyed Marsh, who founded the business, and his mother was a foreigner. The people of Innsmouth were often looked down upon by the rest of the community, and there were many rumors and legends about the town. One of these legends was about a black reef off the coast called Devil Reef, which was said to be home to a legion of devils. The protagonist also mentioned that there had been a big epidemic in 1846 that killed many of the town's inhabitants and left the town in a terrible state. He also mentioned that New England ships used to bring back strange people from other countries and that there may have been something similar going on with the Innsmouth people. As he took the bus into town, he noticed a strong fish-like smell and immediately realized why people didn't like going there and why people in the neighboring towns disliked even the idea of Innsmouth. Once in town, the protagonist came across a few natives of Innsmouth and found them to all have narrow heads, flat noses, and starry eyes. The looks left him intrigued, and he wanted to find out as much as he could about this strange town before he left on the bus later that afternoon. While in a grocery store, he met a young clerk, who was not from Innsmouth, who gave the protagonist some more background on the town, including a rough map of the streets and giving him the name of an elderly local drunk named Zodic Allen, who loved to talk to outsiders about the history of the strange town. Still curious, the protagonist did his best to meet up with Zodic and learn even more about Innsmouth. Using a bottle of booze as bait, he lured Zodic to a remote area of downtown and proceeded to give him the drink and listen to his tale. Zodic, who was very old, had seen much in the town and went on at length, telling a tale of fish frogmen known as Deep Ones who lived beneath the sea. It seemed they brought prosperity in the form of fish as well as fantastically wrought gold jewelry to those who offered them human sacrifice. These fish frogmen were amphibious and were able to mate with humans. The hybrid brood had the appearance of normal humans in early life, but in adulthood, slowly transformed into deep ones. The completed transformation brought them eternal life, which they lived in cities under the sea. These fish frogmen were first discovered in the Indies by a native island tribe, which was itself found by Obeyed Marsh. When hard times befell in Zmuth, Obeyed, and some followers did what they could to call up the fish frogmen in their New England town, causing an increase in the town's wealth. However, Obeyed and his minions were apprehended by the authorities and the remaining in Smooth residents balked at the idea of sacrificing humans to the Deep Ones. Outraged, 
The Deep Ones attacked the town one night and slaughtered more than half its population. The survivors were left with no choice but to offer human sacrifices to the Deep Ones and also women to mate with them. The countless deaths were blamed on an unknown plague. Zadok was at first angry that the protagonist appeared not to believe him. After seeing strange waves approach the dock, he became frightened and told the protagonist to leave town immediately because they had been seen. Zadok disappeared, never to be seen again. Afterwards, the protagonist was unnerved but thought it a product of a fertile imagination. As the evening approached, the protagonist learned that the bus in which he came to town was experiencing engine trouble, so he was forced to spend the night in town. He had no choice but to spend the night in a musta hotel. He tried to keep his mind occupied, as he didn't want to dwell on the strange and unsettling things he had heard about the town and the hotel. In his hotel room, he found it difficult to focus on his reading, as the room had a musty and deathly smell that seemed to blend with the town's overall fishy odor. He was also disturbed by the fact that there was no bolt on the door of his room. He transferred a bolt from the clothes press to the door and secured it. He didn't feel like undressing, so he decided to read until he felt sleepy, then lie down with only his coat, collar, and shoes off. But sleep didn't come. He found himself unconsciously listening for something, something he feared but couldn't name. He wasn't sure if he should even try to sleep at all. He started to speculate whether the inn was one where travelers were killed for their money or if the locals were resentful of curious visitors. He became paranoid and was glad that he had bolted his door. He then heard someone trying to open his door with a key and realized it was an intruder. He lay still and quietly and heard the intruder enter the rooms on either side of his, but was unable to enter his room due to the bolt. After the intruder left, the protagonist realized he needed to escape the hotel quickly and planned to do so without using the main stairs and lobby. But when he tried to turn on the light to gather his belongings, he found that the power had been cut off, indicating that something sinister was happening on a large scale. He heard muffled creaking on the floor below and voices in conversation. He decided to try to escape through the connecting door on the north side of his room and made a plan to reach the roof, descend to the ground, and escape the town. He preferred to take the Southwood route to avoid the Paint Street area where the fire station might be open all night. He looked out the window at the decaying roofs and the surrounding landscape, including the River Gorge and the road to Ipswich. He was uncertain when to make his escape, as he knew that the attempt would be dangerous and noisy, and he had to time it right in order to avoid being caught. He also reinforced his door by pushing a bureau against it to make it harder for anyone to enter. He knew his chances of success were slim, but he was prepared to take the risk. He escaped out a window, eventually through the town, avoiding the pursuing dark figures. He made his way to some train tracks where he heard a great many creatures passing in the road before him. He hid and resolved to close his eyes, having at this point come to accept the idea that Sodic's story was true. He could not keep them closed, however, and upon seeing the fish frog creatures in full light for the first time, fainted in his hiding spot. He woke up unharmed and quickly walked to the next town, Rowley. Over the years that passed, he began doing research into his family tree, discovering some disturbing information along the way. He discovered that he was a descendant of Obeyed Marsh himself. His life changed drastically after discovering a possible connection between their family and the town of Innsmouth. His great-grandmother was a Marsh, and her husband lived in Arkham. To cope with these thoughts, the protagonist tried to bury himself in routine by working in an insurance office. However, in the winter of 1930-31, he started to experience vivid and frequent dreams. In these dreams, he found himself wandering through sunken particles and labyrinths, accompanied by grotesque fishes. He also encountered other inhuman shapes in the dream, which filled him with nameless horror upon waking up. His health and appearance gradually worsened, forcing him to quit his job and become an invalid. 
He also noticed that he was starting to resemble his deceased relatives in appearance, as the characteristic and smooth look began to appear on him. The narrator had a dream where he met his grandmother under the sea, who had not died but instead gone to live in a realm of wonders with the Deep Ones, and that this was to be his destiny as well. Having accepted his fate, he felt he would be happy living with the Deep Ones forever in the city you Henthly I, deep beneath the sea. He also had a cousin, even further transformed than he, being held in a mental hospital whom he planned to break free and take with him. He wanted them to swim out to the brooding reef in the sea and dive down through black abysses to Cyclopean and many columned Euhanthlii. In that lair of the Deep Ones, they would dwell amidst wonder and glory forever. Thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, please consider subscribing to our channel. Pressing a like and commenting would help us greatly. You can also support us on Patreon. Link in the description. See you soon on Books Recapped.